This is uh, part three of the homework video guide for section 5.5. And for question uh, 16, um, I have a word problem where a ball is being dropped from a high rise building. So here's my ball and it's being dropped from that high rise building. And the height of the ball uh, is measured in meters. So this height is measured in meters. And we also have uh, seconds after the ball is dropped. So uh, my x axis will be measured in time. And uh, basically this relationship can be modeled by this formula right here, this function. And the very first question is, I need to find the height when time equals to zero. All right, so when you see the zero, this means that the time is equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and re rewrite my equation here. H of t equals to negative 9.8t squared plus 100. Now, um, if you think about it logically, um, the ball is pretty much starting right here, right? This is where the ball starts. So this is when the time equals to zero, when the ball is uh, when the ball is first being dropped. So uh, when time equals to zero, basically this question is asking what is the height of the building, right? So the ball is being dropped from that from that high rise building at the beginning, and uh, when time equals to zero, that's essentially asking for the height of that building. Okay, so if I go back to this mathematical problem here, uh, basically what's happening here is the zero is uh, replacing all the t variables. So this t right here and that t will be replaced with zero, right? So h of zero equals to negative 9.8. And then my time here is going to be zero, but that's going to raise the power to plus 100. All right, so uh, this part right here in yellow, um, negative 9.8 times zero squared, I mean, zero times anything is just gonna be, it's just gonna be zero, so you're left with 100. So the height of the building is 100 meters. All right, so uh, basically going back to my diagram here, um, this height right here in blue, this height of the building is 100 meters when time is equal to zero. And for part B, uh, I'm asking for the height of the ball after two seconds. Okay, so if I go back to my diagram here, um, maybe after two seconds, maybe the ball is maybe somewhere over here. So uh, time equals to two seconds. So the question is, what is the height of the ball after two seconds? Okay, so uh, basically I'm looking for uh, H of two, right? So uh, basically what that means is anytime you see the T variable, that gets replaced with two. So this two would go right there. And then from here, I would recommend that you probably go to a calculator and um, evaluate this. Um, I can't do this in my head, but I can do two to the power two, and two to the power two is gonna be four, right? So uh, negative 9.8 times four, I would just put that into the calculator at 100, and I have a height of 60.8 meters. Okay, so after two seconds, the ball is 60.8 meters up in the air. So going back to my diagram right here, so after two seconds, so let's just say that two seconds is my x variable, and then my height would be 60.8 meters. Okay, so that's exactly what we found for 16b. And finally, for 16c, uh, the question is asking for find the time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. Okay, so if I look at my diagram right here, uh, here's my ball, and basically it will go to the, um, to the basically after uh, some time, the ball will hit the ground. And you have to ask yourself, when it hits the ground here, you have to recognize that once the ball hits the ground, the height of the ball is equal to zero. Okay, so if, if I'm given that h of t equals to negative 9.8t squared plus 100, we need to establish that the height of the ball will be zero when the ball hits the ground, right? So uh, we put a zero here, and then we leave this as negative 98 t squared plus 100 and our goal now is to solve for this t variable right so now we're going to solve this equation here all right so let's go ahead and uh, take this negative uh, this positive 100 move it to the other side if i move it to the other side it becomes negative 100 right so 0 minus 100 is going to be negative 100 equals to negative 9.8 t squared and then with your calculator i recommend that you divide by negative 9.8 and if you do that, you get positive 10.204, and that's going to equal to t squared, right? Because that and that cancel off, and now you're left, now you're just left with t squared. Now to get rid of that uh, power two, all you're doing now is you're just taking the square root of both sides. So w once you take the square root of 10.204 on your calculator, you should get about uh, 3.19 seconds. 
and that equals to a single time variable there. So it takes about 3.19 seconds for the ball to hit the ground. Okay, now let's finish off uh, this homework video guide with question number 17. Uh, so for question number 17, I'm given another storyline where um, this function P of D, which is D over 32 plus one, it gives the pressure of the atmosphere in depth in feet of the ocean. Okay, so this uh, last question has to do with with pressure and depth, um, and um, I need to find the pressure at 160 feet. Okay, so if I'm given 160 feet, I need to convert that into uh, pressure, and pressure is measured in the unit's uh, atmosphere, right? So uh, this is gonna be uh, ATM. So those are the units for atmosphere. Now, these kind of problems, they're not too bad. Um, the storylines, you don't need to really fully understand the full storylines. You just need to understand where to plug in the numbers. And uh, basically, you're given uh, 160 feet, and you need to find the pressure, right? So uh, basically, your uh, depth is now going to be 160 feet. So anytime you see the D variable, that's going to be replaced with 160. So this would be P of 160. And my D variable now gets replaced with 160. Uh, divide by 32 plus 1. And 160, how many times does uh, 32 uh, go into 160? That's going to be five times. And then you add the one, and then you get six. And my units are six pressure units, or, or sorry, um, atmospheres. So my units for that is going to be ATM. So six ATM. Okay, so the pressure is six, and the units for pressure is atmospheres, which is ATM. And finally, for the last one here, 17B, at what depth is the pressure 9.6 atmospheres? Okay, so once again, not a not a super hard problem because you're just plugging in numbers into the formula here. So this is our function here. And remember, where does 9.6 atmospheres go? Well, it replaces all of this, right? So this becomes 9.6. And I want to find the depth when that happens. So when the pressure is 9.6 atm, I want to figure out what depth, um, what depth um, that actually happens at. So a little bit of algebra here. How do I get rid of this plus one? Well, I move it over and that becomes 9.6 minus one equals to D over 32. And 9.6 minus one is gonna be 8.6 equals to D over 32. And then with a the calculator, I would finish this off by taking that 32 and multiplying with that 8.6. So 8.6 times 32. That's going to be my depth, and if I go to my calculator for that, I should get about 275.2 feet. And that is my final answer for question 17b.